Imagine you're a pirate. Okay, have that picture in your head. Picture it. Is it something like this? <laughs> Very romanticized image of pirates sailing the open seas, looting treasure. But actually, you think about it, piracy was a job. It was a vocation. And like most jobs, there were goals and challenges. And of course, a pirate's goal is to get the treasure, right? As much treasure as possible. They did this by invading passing ships and taking that treasure. And therein lies the challenge that could often be deadly. Pirates would often risk their lives to get that treasure to attain their goals. So they had to be sure whichever ships they targeted had the most treasure so that they would potentially lower that risk. But my question is, how did they know? How did they know which of these ships to invade? Well, actually, I looked into this, and pirates use maps. Not like those treasure maps that you think of, but they use actual <coughs> marine naval maps. Um, they also study trade routes. They had scouts. They use all the resources to determine which ships to invade and get that treasure. <laughs> Why am I talking about pirates? OK. Um, Actually, us as SEOs, we can learn a lot from these pirates. How? Well, as SEOs, we also have goals like getting as much quality traffic to our sites as possible. And we did this, or we do this, by satisfying user intent. We want to make sure that our site is in the SERP where our users are and they're searching what's relevant to our site. We want to be sure that we're there. And of course, we also have challenges, right? Just like pirates. For example, efficient targeting. Now, typically, this process takes a long time. We do the keyword research. We do the analysis. And then we look for a strategy. This can take a lot of time, a lot of resources, and often is not very efficient. Another challenge is filling our gaps. There is a sea of keywords. We can't possibly target all of them. So finding those gaps is a really great strategy, but it can be challenging, right? Where are those gaps? How do we find them? And the third challenge, Third challenge, okay, there we go, is prioritizing. Once we get all of our data and our analysis, how do we know what to prioritize? And how do we share that with our stakeholders? Well, taking a page out of a pirate's map, we can build a map for search. So today, we're going on a little adventure together, we're going to build this map, and then we're going to use the map to navigate to our treasure. Specifically, the three golden nuggets. What are these nuggets? So we want to first align with user intent so that we show up in the right places. We want to create a strategy that is efficient and informative. And then we want to get stakeholders on board with this strategy. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Awesome. OK. Let's go. So how to build a user journey map. Let's define what that is first. A user journey map is a model, essentially. It illustrates the stages a customer goes through during their search process. Now, 
little sidebar. I did write a blog post on Wix. If you want to take a picture of this, uh, you can read it later. It adds a lot more context. Um, five steps, how to build a user journey map. But for today, we'll do it in three steps. And I'm going to go through these individually. So step one is to lay a foundation and set your objectives. What's the aim of this? So what we want to do here is gather our keywords that are relevant for your customer. So for a foundation, this is going to be our map. We're going to fill in this map as we go. And I'll show you how to do that. And for today, we'll use an example website. So I picked Brighton Boating. This is an actual website. Um, so let's use this an example. First, gather our keywords. We want keyword data. Often you already have a seed list, um, but you do want to keep in mind that you don't want just keywords that you're already ranking for. You also want keywords that you want to rank for uh, potentially in the future. And then decide on what data dimensions you want. So this will help us fill in uh, our map. In this case, we're going to go with funnel stage, search intent, and topic groups. So funnel stage is, I'm sure you're all uh, familiar, is like the traditional marketing stages, awareness, consideration, and conversion. That kind of helps you gauge uh, where in the journey a user is for each of the data points. And search intent, of course, you're familiar as well, transactional, informational, comparative, et cetera. And then topic groups, those are going to depend on what your keywords are. And then for the user journey part, we're going to include journey stage and milestones. And I'm going to explain this more in the next step, which is creating a user persona. OK, what is the aim of this? So we want to get into the mindset of our user, our customers. And knowing the customers and what they think will help us meet them where they are in their search journey. And for this, we really want to know about their motivations for searching something, as well as their pain points for searching. And in this case, while we're building the map, the motivations are going to be mapped to journey stage. So this is the reason why the customer is searching. And the pain points are mapped to milestones. Milestones represent what kind of issues they come up with while they're searching within that user, uh, that journey stage. So it's nested underneath the journey stage. OK, so gathering uh, data for our customer insights. We need customer insights. Traditionally, you could use customer reviews and surveys, focus groups. But oftentimes, we don't have access to that. So AI to the rescue. We can use ChatGPT. I'll show you how to do that. First, you're going to need a good prompt. So let's look at motivations first. Again, they map to uh, journey stage. What type of prompt should we write for this? You want to include your type of business, what kind of business it is, and also your key products or services. So in the prompt, I'll show you an example. Boating business, remember Brighton Boating is our example. That's the type of business. Sailing lessons is our key product or service. And then this is the important part. List the most common customer motivations when they search for sailing lessons. And GPT is going to give you a list of key motivations. 
Let's start off with the first thing on the list, which is learning to sail. We're going to copy and paste that into our map under the journey stage. So learning to sail is our first motivation. Next, let's delve into pain points under this motivation, which is going to map to milestones. Again, we're going to need a good prompt, something like this. So you want to learn more about people who search for how to sail. What are the most common pain points for people who are learning? And it'll give you a list, again, of common pain points here. So again, copy and paste this into your map. So you've got the journey stage, learning to sail. Milestones are pain points. And you copy and paste into here. I've added in awareness just for context. Um, you can add the descriptions here. That's optional. But it does have, you know, it's, it adds context and it's fun reading sometimes. Um, but yeah, again, optional. Next, you want to clean up this list a little bit. Some of these can be grouped. Uh, they're, the common topics can be grouped together. So I've cleaned it up a little bit. And importantly, uh, change these, the wording into action words. So this helps you kind of take the search intent a little bit further by making this an action. So I've uh, added in learn to sail into all these rows that correspond with the milestones here. OK. You're going to want to repeat this process. So it does take a bit of time at the beginning, but again, go into another motivation, uh, copy and paste into your sheet until you've got a full user journey here, list of uh, journey stages, as well as the milestones. This is a condensed version, but yeah. So next. You're going to categorize these. You're going to categorize and map your keywords to your map. OK. The goal here is to assign the keywords to the most relevant milestones to the journey. And also, this helps you validate what you have in your map. Often we know that AI can be a bit inaccurate sometimes. So you can use your uh, keyword data to validate your data uh, from GPT. Another benefit of this is also um, it helps you highlight some gaps. When I've done this in the past, um, I've often found that I was missing some keywords for certain milestones. So that I would go back and do some keyword expansion, or maybe if there wasn't keyword data available, remove the milestone. So categorizing, you can do this manually, or you can use, again, AI, our best friend. Um, I've used this uh, GPT for Sheets extension. Um, you can use GPT Classify, which is, uh, one, once you download it, you open it in Google Sheets, uh, and it's this formula where value is going to be your keyword Categories is what you want to categorize in, into, so your, your user journey. And then examples. Examples are you have to give examples of how you want it categorized. <laughs> now, this takes me to some uh, considerations for this tool, which, number one, you have to train it. It's not going to just categorize them automatically. Uh, so that just takes a bit of time at first. but the, the positive side is once you train it for a specific vertical, um, you won't have to repeat that process. I know they're all number one. Sorry about that. Should be two. Uh, number two, not all, not all of it is 100% accurate. In fact, when I've tested this in the past, I've got about 80% accuracy for the output. 
So you do have to QA the output. Um, but again, it does still take, uh, it does save some time. And the third thing is it's not a free tool. You do have to pay uh, depending on how big your keyword list is. Okay. So in this, this example, I've used a tool to categorize the keywords into each milestone here. Now, keeping in mind also that there could be multiple keywords that fit into each milestone. Actually, that's the most of the case it is. So just format your, uh, just add, add more rows, format your, your map accordingly. Okay, and do this for your entire user journey. Now that we have our map, let's navigate. Okay, remember our treasure. Our aim is to get the three gold nuggets. Let's look at the first one, aligning with the user search intent. So how do we use this map? We can check the map for pages that meet search intent. So we can use it kind of like a checklist. From the map, look at the pages that we have on our site. If we have a page that meets the intent, say yes. So we have pages that meet intent here. Where it says no, well, that's a really great opportunity, right? We're filling those gaps. We know, okay, maybe we should create new pages there. So we've got the first gold nugget. Second one, create a strategy. We can use the map to visualize the data and to uncover opportunities, and that'll help us get a strategy. So, for example, in this graph, we have the stages here, and then we have milestones here. This data shows available traffic, which is in blue, and we can compare that with our current traffic. So we can see, okay, where are we doing well or not well? Uh, where are the biggest opportunities? We can layer that take it a step further, look at different platforms. In this example, I looked at YouTube search volume compared to Google. Because sometimes, depending on your vertical, our users are searching on different platforms. So again, looking at the different stages and the milestones, we can look and see where there is overlap and the opportunities by platform. Again, great we've got our second gold nugget. And the third one, getting our stakeholders on board. We can use our map to prioritize. So using the map, we can visualize which stages have the most opportunity. Looking at the different stages, we can see learning to sail potentially has the biggest opportunity here. Take it a step further. We can attach a value to each of the stages and each milestone. So here I've used page value and projected value. Looking at the different stages, we can see where the opportunities lie and we can potentially present this to our stakeholders to get buy-in from them. Again, you can use different KPIs. Whichever, you, uh, whichever ones you use, you can use traffic or revenue. Great, we've got our treasure, all three gold nuggets. Well, while re reaching our goal is important, I go back to the pirates in the day and I think, well, what would they, what would they think? And I think they would say, it's really not about the treasure, it's more about the adventure, the lessons you learn. It's really about the journey you take to get there. And I would tend to agree. Thank you very much.